Hey dude, do you like to untap the air conditioner? Is that your high spot? Give us a crow, come on. Something. No crow? Okay. Good morning, you guys. It is a beautiful morning out here. A cool front came in in Dallas, Texas. I know, in July, in the end of July. It's crazy. So it's crazy cool out here. Um, it feels so cool because we're, you know, we're used to over 100 and then drop down to. I think it was 87 yesterday was the high so yeah it feels pretty amazing so I'm out on the farm and the ladies are out with me my egg laying divas and Duke is wandering around the farm strutting his stuff aren't you Duke He's gonna be camera shy today. Yes, you guys see my sign, it fell apart. So I've gotta repair that. I have another sign in the works. This one is gonna say bloom where your plant is. So I'm excited about that. We will see, I need to get working on that. And look what they did to my plant, you guys. My fern. So you guys, chickens love all things green. They just love to eat it. So, letting them out in the yard with Duke. Sometimes this happens. I left it down one day. Um, I was in a hurry and I forgot to pick it up and put it on the rain barrel, so they ate it. Ate it. I know, savage. That's why I'm glad my um, garden is in the front yard, for sure. We've run into a little problem with the chicks. Still not exactly sure who's a rooster and who's a hen. Some I totally know, but others I'm not sure yet. So we'll see. I'm still wondering if that little one is a hen or not. That one right there. We'll see. Anyway, the problem we're having is letting them out. This is a pretty small coop as you guys can see. So I really was looking forward to letting them get out for most of the day into the yard but we ran into a huge snag on that on that note there are so many holes in the fence in fact in some cases there are huge gaps <laughs> and while the big girls can't fit through there the little ones can so you guys, these little baby chicks have been out in the alley, down the alley, they've been in the neighbor's yard, and the neighbor does have a dog, a really, really well-behaved dog, but still, yeah, so he was catching them and putting them back and that, so I'm sure he's tired of that. So for the time being, we have to leave them pinned up in here and I need to come up with a solution. So I'm not sure what that's gonna be. I'm thinking about maybe doing a little chicken, temporary chicken yard for them to come out in. But if I go and buy, buy steaks for that and chicken wire, um, then I'm going to have to spend some money that I've been saving to build the new coop. So kind of one, two steps forward, I mean, one step forward, two steps back. <laughs> so we'll see, but that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing because I can't really think of another solution right now. I'm really glad they haven't really bothered my Simbuck Jasmine yet. There must be some plants they just don't like. Simbuck Jasmine has these little blooms that smell amazing, but it's a shade, it's a shade plant. So this is my only plant that I take in and out in the winter. <laughs> okay, off the patio. Come on, off the patio, go. Go on. I've always dreamed of enclosing the patio in with the little fence that goes 
right from that fence right there all the way over to that wall. A little picket fence with a gate right there to keep the chickens off the patio. There are so many projects I want to do and I'm sure you do too. Things just go a little too slow for my taste in homesteading. I just want everything to happen at once. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't uh, money wise or time wise. It just doesn't happen at once. It's one step forward at a time. But that's okay. That's okay to go to take those baby steps just as long as you're moving in the right direction. You're moving forward. Everybody is on their second round of Corid for coccidiosis. If you missed our little outbreak of coccidiosis, I will link up to that video, uh, what it is and how to treat it. So yeah, we're in our second round for five more days and then we're done. Feels so good to be out here in the garden. I want to report on the rampancante, Zucchino rampancante. Um, the one that produces this, <laughs> all this food, <laughs> tastes wonderful. Just sauteed with some onion and garlic. It's really good, folks. So, the leaves are wilting. And it's interesting. I can see where the squash vine borer has gotten all up in the stem of this thing. But... It's hanging in there and it does seem to be, I can see where the squash bar, vine borer has gotten in to the stem and then that leaf section dies. I think because the stem is so solid that it's just, it can't get in there very good and it's going for the leaves, which are more hollow. So the, you know, the leaf branches seem to be dying, but the plant rocks on. So we'll see. I keep thinking I'm gonna lose it any day now because it is just riddled with squash vine borer, but still producing fruit. So, we'll see, see how long this lasts. The other thing that keeps rocking on is my Desi squat. Look at these little baseballs of goodness. I wanted to tell you guys about Egyptian spinach. It is a beast in the summer garden. It is a great summer green. Well, spinach and lettuce don't do well here because of the heat. Egyptian spinach rocks. And it tastes so good, you guys. Very mild tasting, very much like spinach. So good. And good for you, too. This, compared to Malabar spinach, I will take this any day. I found Malabar spinach to be kind of slimy, and yeah, I didn't, my family didn't care for it. Neither did my chickens. And if chickens don't like something, well, um, hmm, that's pretty bad. So, yeah, I'm sending you guys some of the seeds for this Egyptian spinach in the giveaway package. So if you haven't signed up for the giveaway, I will leave a link in the de description below, in the video description, and just click on that, watch what we're giving away, and then that'll give you instructions on how to enter the giveaway. So you guys go enter. It goes to August 10th, so you've still got time. All right, Egyptian spinach, yum. Oh, you guys, it feels so good to be out here in the garden and get a break. This is a really busy time of year for me. Um, it's the school year starting, and so I teach not only my kids, my daughter and my son are still at home. It's my daughter's first year of high school, so game on. <laughs> and then uh, I belong to a co-op where she takes some of her classes, and all the parents teach. So there I teach um, high school Spanish, and I teach preschool Spanish also. 
so the little to the big <laughs> so it's really it's fun but it's a lot of work and this planning time this getting ready time is a tons and tons of work going through curriculum finishing up all the you know quizzes and everything everything that needs to be done ahead of time because I do not have time during the year to mess with it it all has to be done you know now planned out so it's a busy busy time so it's good to take a break get off the computer get out of the house and work in the garden <laughs> but I wanted to share with you guys kind of a little bit of bad news about the giveaway if you don't know about our giveaway then I will leave a link in the video description and you can go watch that video and see what all what we're giving away and how to enter so be sure to do that it ends August 10th so you still got time but I think I'm gonna have to take out the honey you guys I know the honey from my girls um, because a friend of mine, well, one of, one of my great viewers told me that it's really tricky to ship honey in this heat and it could burst and it could um, ruin the whole package. I mean, I've got books in there, um, you know, a beautiful mosaic, <laughs> our plaques. So I definitely don't want those to get ruined. So I think I'm gonna have to take out the honey. But if you guys know of any way to like safely ship honey, if you think I could, maybe I could seal it up in a bag somehow that just in case something happened to it, it would be sealed and it wouldn't ruin the rest of the package. So yeah, if you guys have any ideas about that, let me know. Or like if I could put it in a, maybe I could put it in a plastic container, it would do better. So I'm not really sure. I hope I don't have to take it out, but I need to think of a way to make sure it's safe in the package and it doesn't ruin everything else if it leaks or explodes or something. All right, you guys, it has been fun hanging out with you today. I need to go back inside and get to work on school. Bye now.